I don't know if we could rejoin, could we? Can we? I'll put a link up at the end of the video to a Vox Pop that I did when an Irish lady exactly asked that of me. Oh, could we really rejoin? I want to rejoin, but I'm not sure if we're allowed to. Wow, really fantastic polling from YouGov. It shows that there is a majority. Britain has decided there is an overwhelming majority to rejoin the European Union. YouGov decided to put four choices to the public. They asked, do you want to rejoin the European Union? Do you want to go back into the single market? Do you want to stay with this current Brexit deal? Or would you like to completely and utterly blow all the doors off and uh, try and um, somehow leave, uh, leave the European Union completely um, and blow up international law and um, cause chaos? Uh, and yes, there are some people who want to do that, unbelievable. But um, there's also a lot of people who say, mm, I don't know. But the, the biggest majority by far um, out of all of the different scenarios, the British want to rejoin the European Union. And I think what's so important to remember is that no political party is campaigning to rejoin. And before Brexit happened, you know, before we had the campaign, it, it, there was no great um, desire for Brexit to happen. I can't remember what the polling was, but it was not, there, there was certainly not a majority for Brexit. It grew with the campaign. And that's what campaigning is all about, is to try and inspire people to get behind something. Nobody is trying to inspire Britain to get behind rejoining the European Union, apart from uh, campaigners like me. There is no party saying this is a good idea. And Keir Starmer actually continues to say, no, we're going to stay out of the single market and uh, those sort of things. But, but, and this is the interesting bit. The, the reality is we are going to get a Labour government. Things are only going to get worse for Rishi Sunak. Every month he clings on to power it means that less Conservative MPs will be coming back to Westminster after the election. And, you know, there's no doubt about that. And when you look at the deeper polling about the support for rejoining the European Union, when it's split between Conservative and Labour, this is what matters. Because the overwhelming majority of Labour voters are supporting rejoining and or uh, going back in the single market. I mean, it's complicated and it is a bit, you know, I think some people say we need to start with going back in the single market, even though they know that it is a step by step thing, because being back in the single market is not ideal because we will be rule takers. We will have to accept rules that we cannot influence and we won't have a veto. And that is not a comfortable position. So whichever step we take, you end up realising that the best position is rejoining the European Union. But it's up to the European Union to allow us back in, I'll tell you. So there's no way that we can rejoin uh, quickly. But really what we need, and Ukraine has this, Ukraine had an overwhelming majority, 90 odd percent, wanted to join the European Union. Nobody gets to make an individual decision about which rejoin we get or how we rejoin. What the European Union needs to hear is, Britain wants to rejoin the European Union and then we begin the journey back. And that's really where we need to think, that's where we need to think about um, going. But I know there's people that support uh, Brexit continuing, watch my videos and why I like to talk about food is because obviously I'm interested in food because we farm, but also my history is my grandfather was a cook in the RAF and he was, uh, he was out in India in the war. And that's really where my concerns around food security emanated from because he educated me as a child about food and food scarcity. And... Um, that's why I have always believed that Brexit is a disaster because it's bad for food and 
we now know that I was right in, in that regard. If these checks come in, we will be looking at significant food shortages and surges in food prices. And that is not a comfortable position for most people. Um, if you're very wealthy, you can afford to pay a lot of money for food. And if there's riots, you can afford to jump on your uh, private jet and go, go somewhere else to escape them. Um, but ultimately, food problems lead to serious disorder. And I, I don't believe many of us want to see that. And I do think that the food problems will lead to that, particularly with the geopolitical events um, going on with war, the difficulties with the uh, Suez and Panama canals, um, and um, particularly because of the Ukraine war and the fertilizer shortages um, means that food is contracting globally. And now is the wrong time to think that you can leave your food bank in Europe and uh, hope that someone will take pity on you for food supplies. Um, anyway, I think that ultimately this is really good news and we need to, we need to build on this. And um, hopefully the uh, reality will sink into Keir Starmer that the very, small majority, the very small minority who are happy with the status quo um, are, uh, means that we have to move and we have to move significantly. And that's what I, that's what I believe. And that's what these charts say to me. I will put a link in below to the article and um, I, hope you, uh, I hope you feel as optimistic as I do and it's good news for the new year that we all need. That there's no case for going back into the EU and that includes the single market and the customs union. Equally, uh, we will not be a rule taker. The rules and laws of this country will be made in Parliament according to the national interest. But that does not mean that a Labour government wants to lower standards on food, wants to lower standards on people's rights at work. The Labour Party has been completely consistent on those issues for many, many years. There's no surprise here. And incidentally, this is also government policy.